Hello. The genome is huge. Even a bacterial genome is also huge, if not as big as the eukaryotic ones. And the whole genome, the, the genome has thousands of uh, genes that are that need to be transcribed. And so, how does the or where does the RNA polymerase start transcription? And how does it initiate transcription? Is what is the most important step? Because it cannot start from the middle of the gene. It should start because it should start ahead or upstream of the gene. And the processes that happen, how much should it be transcribed? How many times a gene should be transcribed? And as we go in the further, when should it be transcribed? Is an important uh, point to understand. And that is where initiation of transcription comes in. We will look at some of the important parts or uh, parts involved in prokaryotic initiation or the steps. So usually it is uh, the genome is usually or the broken arrow represents a promoter. And here the plus one that is indicated indicates the first base added during transcription. So all the regions that we call all the regions that are present on this side, we call them as downstream. And all the regions on this side, we call them as upstream. It's just for a reference sake. And again, if you are talking about a different gene, then we would have called it uh, downstream or upstream for that context. If we were talking about the uh, a promoter or a gene present on the bottom strand, then too the context would change. For this locus, and when we want to describe something, we could call them as, say, downstream, if it is uh, past the plus one, and if it is ahead, then you call it as upstream. So if this is plus one, and there are several sequences, conserved sequences within the promoter regions, which you call, which are the regions ahead of the open reading frames, usually the, or the genes are present here, something like that. So the around about minus 10 region, we have a sequence uh, in uh, E. coli. It is TAT, AAT. That is the region called Brignobox, TAT, AAT. You can make it as a, a rhyme or something to memorize it. Not that we have to memorize, but this is the only sequence that is um, uh, well documented or characterized in the textbook so it's not a bad idea to memorize it and the other one is around minus 35 region that minus 35 because we count it in from here and we keep counting we get it about minus 10 and about minus 35 there is a spacer here as well as a spacer here and then we have a region sequence called as ttg aca TTG, ACA, TAT, AAT. That's probably, if you can memorize it, it'll be nice. Majority of these promoters have these kinds of sequences. And these are the most optimal ones for, um, for the Sigma 70 uh, transcription or housekeeping ones. So in different genes, you may have alterations of these minus 10 and minus 35 regions. That means, say, in one of the strains, you probably have something like uh, you may have T A G A A T. You may have that. So there will be light, slight alterations. There could be slight alterations in minus 10 and minus 35 in different genes. The best optimal ones are apparently these things T A T A A T and minus 35 is T T G A C A. Not only that, there can be additional elements as well like up elements which are present in some hundred bases or so and they may they may have they may have a role in uh, transcriptional activity and regulation as well some of the some of the pr pr promoters may not have minus 35 at all instead they have a region something like uh, called as uh, extended the minus 10 has a little bit of little more more extension so 
that is called as extended minus 10 probably and there are also other regions called as uh, discriminate regions which are also involved in um, are re involved in regulation of this transcriptional initiation so what we can see is that there are different types of promoters at least the ones that we see here are four types and they have sequences TAT, AAT minus 10, TTG, SEA minus 35 and they also could have variations in these regions and that is how these promoters are present. Promoters are the sites where transcription is initiated and promoters if this is the open reading frame that is present we would have a promoter here and this way the transcription would have happened. And then there is also about RNA polymerase and there should be some mechanisms for RNA polymerase to come and bind to the promoters. And that is the one that is indicated here is the RNA uh, polymerase. This is the N-terminal domain, alpha N-terminal domain and this is the alpha C-terminal domain, amino terminal domain and carboxylic terminal domain. That is how we, we call for proteins for, for DNA and RNA we would say this is 5 prime and uh, 5 prime to 3 prime whereas for proteins when we say we call it N terminus and C terminus amino terminus and carboxylic terminus so in that sense here uh, the RNA polymerase is made up of multi it is a multi subunit complex and in that the alpha subunit the N terminal domain and here we have the C terminal domain the C terminal domain actually in, uh, in, interacts with the up element in whichever genes it is present. But otherwise, the majority of the interaction or how RNA polymerase comes and binds to the promoter specifically is determined by another factor called as sigma. Sigma factor is the enzyme, uh, is the protein complex which in complex with RNA polymerase has affinity for minus 10 and minus 35 and it has several modules or domains uh, sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 4 like that sigma 2 domain interacts with minus 10 whereas sigma 4 interacts with minus 35 and by binding so it is actually bringing the rna polymerase to the site of promoter and that is how rna polymerases are brought to the site and it is like whole orchestration of when uh, i mean where transcription should start so majority of the genes have and the promoters on their upstream side on the five prime side and that is where transcription is initiated and this is all specific to bacteria prokaryotic uh, transcription so once they bind like this you call it as something called as uh, once they bind there the dna at that uh, location the two uh, the the double stranded ones will denature a little bit and that denaturation will allow the polymerization to initiate so it's not that polymerization would initiate it with uh, just starts immediately around somewhere between plus three to somewhere between minus 11 this region of the promoter usually uh, melts that means denatures and then there are conformational changes that would happen in RNA polymerase and then it would start initiation initiation wouldn't happen just like that there is kind of stutter like thing like DNA polymerase sorry RNA polymerase will start trying to move but uh, and uh, fails so there are multiple reasons probably for it one of the reasons is because the uh, the Sigma factor is is blocking the RNA channel exit channel and that could be one of the reasons it will be nice it will be a way of appreciating it is this Sigma factor has effect affinity to the promoter Sigma factor also has affinity to RNA polymerase and then what will allow the RNA polymerase to move when it has affinity for Sigma factor it dif it is difficult to move ahead so it is a matter of chance that is also which or probability increased by the conformational changes whereby it will reduce or have lesser affinity for sigma factor so that it can start moving forward 
So the initial times when it starts polymerizes a little bit of RNA fragment and comes back and that kind of um, stuttering is referred to as abortive initiation. Initiation has started but aborted. And at one point the RNA polymerase will lose the contact with the sigma factor and will go from initiation phase to that of elongation phase. That means it continues transcription and uh, that is called as a promoter escape where the RNA polymerase loses affinity for the sigma factor and will will take upon or will continue polymerizing the RNA. And that is what is um, what are the important things about transcription. It is simple compared to that of eukaryotes. See you later. Thank you.